Rohit Bhemula that occurred, that occurred a month back in the University of Hyderabad. I was, in my mind's eye, could see that a bright young Dalit scholar was hanging over the face of our democracy and the Constitution, which speaks of abolition of casteism and prohibits in discrimination of any form among our people, <coughs> rather protects and promotes the interest of the SC, ST, OBC, and the minorities. Rohit's death was not the first one of such incident. It also happened in the past at regular intervals. The protests from different corners demanding justice have not been responded with remedial action, not to speak of sympathetic intervention by the government of the day or the past. Sir, Rohit Bhemula's suicide note explains everything. I need not elaborate. This unfortunate incident once again establishes the fact that even bright scholars belonging to backward class is not safe within our university and act accordingly. Sir, Tinomul Congress was the first party to send its high-level delegation led by our Rajya Sabha leader, Mr. Derek O'Brien, to Hyderabad soon after the tragic death of Rohit, not only to ventilate our anguish and agony, but also express our solidarity with the students and the youth demanding justice. Sir, more so because we cannot alienate 31 crores of our people from the mainstream of our society for any reason whatsoever. Sir, the cruelty which was inflicted upon Rohit Bhemula must not be repeated, and the caste discrimination must come to an end once and for all, and all the culprits who are directly or indirectly responsible for the tragic end of Rohit's life must be brought to book. Sir, so far the incident that took place in Jawaharlal, took place in Jawaharlal Nehru University is concerned. The, I mean, the admitted position is that a commemoral function to observe the death anniversary of a hardcore terrorist who was executed pursuant to court's order was organized in the name of cultural evening on the 9th February 2016 at JNU when anti-India slogans to glorify the deadly terrorists who were instrumental for auto attack on our Indian parliament and elsewhere were reportedly raised. The main accused has of course since denied his involvement in the incident and condemned the act of anti-national activities. But the question is, why permission for organizing the program was accorded, knowing it fully well that such so-called commemoral function was also held in the campus twice in succession, soon after execution of the terrorists following Supreme Court verdict? Was there any intellectual failure? Uh, I mean, intelligence, intelligence failure? And why permission was withdrawn at the last moment at whose behest to create the unrest? It is reported that some outsider and noted separatists thronged into the campus on the fateful evening and raised slogans and posters glorifying the terrorists since executed and also demanding azadi or freedom for Kashmir and right to secede from India. Sir, while that is ex this is extremely deplorable, the question that arises as to why no preventive measure could be initiated by the government or the authorities concerned by discussing with the university authorities and the leaders of the students' union. Sir, how the separatist elements from outside the campus were allowed to enter and resort to anti-national acts the government owes an answer to this August House. Sir, as soon as the videos of 9-2 incident went viral, accusations and counter accusations reached its ugly form, both in electronic and print media, 
as also in the social side and maybe in some anti-social sides also. Sir, when it was incumbent upon all the political parties and other stakeholders to maintain absolute restraint at the outset to defuse attention, it was seen that there was a rat race among some political parties to take credit this way or that way by supporting or not supporting such an ugly incident. Many of our leaders jumped into the fray for reaching the media in a bid to adding fuel to the fire, knowingly or unknowingly. Even a very senior functionary of the government acted irresponsibly by spreading some information on the Twitter, which is baseless, later proved. Sir, Kolkata had to face the immediate effect of Jawaharlal Nehru University incident. But our government in West Bengal dealt with the situation in a diligent manner, which resulted in a restoration of peace and tranquility. Our party workers also in, avoided all sorts of provocation under the instructions from our beloved leader, Ms. Mamta Garaji. Sir, while we condemn all acts of anti-national activities, wherever it takes place in the country, we also decry any attempt in branding anyone as anti-national who is otherwise not involved in such activities. Administrative access to curb a dissenting voice is deplorable as it goes against our constitutional safeguards. Similarly, the attack on journalists at Patiala House Court shows worst form of brutality in as much as it was resorted to by a section of advocates who are otherwise duty bound to defend the law and not to take law in their own hands. Sir, there are reports that a number of videos and audio tapes were tailored and background of some of the videos were also doctored. Now question is, who have doctored the videos and audios? Government must come, come forward with all information to this August House. Sir, <clears throat> so far the issue of sedition is concerned and Section 124 Capital A of the Indian Penal Code is concerned as was explained by the leader of, Honorable Leader of the House. I would like to add a few words on that. The section was not in the original Act of 1860, but it was incorporated later on in 1870 by the then British government actually to punish our freedom fighters, to curb the voice of our media and the intellectuals. Sir, in the, this war sedition was first interpreted in the case of Queen versus Bal Ganga Dhar Tilak in the year 1897 by the Privy Council. Even Mahatma Gandhi was not spared. He was also put under, slapped this section 124A and which led Mahatma Gandhi to say, and I quote, affection cannot be manufactured or regulated by the law. If one has no affection for a person, one should be free to give the fullest expression to his disaffection so long as he does not contemplate, promote, or incite violence, unquote. Our Supreme Court, in plethora of cases, has also ruled in that direction. Therefore, while determining the elements of disaffections to the government or the nation, utmost care and restraint is needed by the law enforcing authorities. But this un section 124A <coughs> has been misutilized both by the colonial rulers and the successive governments in free India to throttle the voice of dissent or disaffection which must not be followed by the present government. In England, since 2010, the sedition law is restricted against non-citizens in USA an identical provision of sedition in the Smith Act has allowed to be confined now to the military only. Therefore, therefore, it is high time that we should also have a relook to Section 124A of IPC 
to avoid misuse and all sorts of harassment, even though we sincerely believe that liberty cannot be enjoyed as a license. Sir, finally, finally, I never cross the time limit, but today, today is a special day, sir. Our nationalism is the principle of the majority of our countrymen, but ultra-nationalism under no circumstances is accepted. Similarly, dissension is one of the guiding factors of our liberal democracy, but ultra-leftism has always been rejected by our people. This is why a particular political party which denounced Indian independence and used to burn out copies of our constitution and national flag on the street of various towns and cities of India, raising the slogan of Ye Azadi Jhuta Hai, and even accusing India as the invader during the Sino-Indian War in 1962, has been compelled to accept our political mainstream, and now they have become a part of our political system. Sir, there is another party which, after experiencing defeats after defeats, in states after states, and also at the national level, reducing itself to a microscopic minority, is now trying to fish in troubled water or any stream of water so that it can get back its monopoly to rule and ruin the country. Somewhere, it joined hands with the fissiferous elements and forging unholy alliances with the party, which not only butchered thousands of their workers, but all along worked against the unity and integrity of the country. Mm. Sir, my final words would be that then there is a rise of a third party, which propagates jingoism and conveniently shaken off the tenets of patriotism. What the nation wants is more and more today is not jingoism, but patriotism. And we are committed to our motherland to protect our national integrity at any cost. In the words of the Chad Tagore, I want to conclude, sir, with your kind permission, that, oh, my country soil, I bow my head to you. On you is spread the universe, encompass, encompassing the universal mother's sari's end. O Amar Desher Mati, Tomar Pare Thakai Matha, Tomate Vishwa Mahe Nachol Vada, O Amar Desher Mati, Tomar Pare Thakai Matha. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Narendra Kumar Kasha. Sir, कल हमारी पार्टी की नेता